Welcome back, everyone. Steve Levy, Gary Miller on Sports Center here on ESPN and ESPN2. There is chaos going on in the ring. They have stopped the fight in Las Vegas. Mike Tyson was fighting someone there towards the end of that, and it certainly wasn't Evander Holyfield. No, it's Bedlam there now. He was attacking some of the people from Holyfield's corner. The, the ring is full now, including security officers, and then near the end of this fracas, Tyson was taking swings at police officers. They have stopped the fight. We're not sure what the resolution is going to be, but as we told you earlier, if you're just joining us, and during a clinch in the third round, Tyson, who came out without his mouthpiece in the third round, bit Evander Holyfield severely on the ear with his blood just streaming out of it. Tyson had had a cut earlier in this bout, so it is absolute chaos in Las Vegas right now. Still nothing official has been announced. Our crew is standing by of Charlie Steiner, John Saraceno, of course, Buster Douglas, who, of course, has a win over Mike Tyson. Check of the ESPN scorecard now, and there you see the way we have scored the first three rounds, the 10-9, the standard scoring in the first two, both to Evander Holyfield, and in the third round, we give the uh, third round to Evander as well, 9-8. We're continuing to sort things out here in Las, in Las Vegas. Mike Tyson still wants a piece of somebody, and it's not a Vander Holyfield he's going after. We will sort it out from Vegas, Sin City, when we come back. You're on SportsCenter on ES. It is now official from Las Vegas. We've gotten word that Mike Tyson has been disqualified, uh, evidently for biting Vander Holyfield a second time in this fight. And just now, both fighters are, for the first time, leaving the ring and attempting to sort things out. And again, we'll get you to Las Vegas in just a bit. But there you see the official right now, a third round disqualification. Evander Holyfield does defeat Mike Tyson. Tyson disqualified for biting. And again, we will keep you posted. We're on our way to Vegas in just a little bit. Those of you watching over on ESPN want to send you back to the arena football game now. San Jose is taking on New Jersey. Actually, hang with us. Did you, did you ever see the movie Broadcast News? <laughs> is that a good time to yeah. bring up an old movie favorite of yours? Well, Albert Brooks. This is kind of so we can explain to people why we say one thing to them and then say another. They say it now, in there. And there was a near riot here. going on just a moment ago as Tyson tried to make it back to his locker room. Charlie Steiner, we hope, is okay. He's out in Las Vegas now. Let's see if he can give us some perspective on this absolute madness that's going on. Charlie? I don't know that we're capable of giving you any perspective at the moment. What we saw tonight is something simply we have never seen before. Mike Tyson apparently completely lost it in the ring. He was losing the fight. He had lost the first two rounds, 10 to 9, 10 to 9, if you were watching our scoring at home. And in the third round, in a clinch, he took a bite out of Evander Holyfield's right ear. I mean, a bite. There is a noticeable chunk missing from Holyfield's ear. Referee Mills Lane, at that point, took two points away from Tyson. So Tyson, who was winning the third round, suddenly was losing the third round, 9-8 on our card. At the end of the round, after Mills Lane warned Mike Tyson, don't ever do that again, Mike Tyson bit Evander Holyfield a second time. Right then and there, Mills Lane, who was, of course, a last-minute substitute to uh, be the official, as you take a look at, at the bite, the first bite in the third round, over the right ear, Evander Holyfield jumped away and was just furious. I have never seen Evander Holyfield, who is a calm, serene man, as angry as he was. He was jumping in the ring and screaming at Mills Lane and at Mike Tyson. They came back a second time, and again, Mike Tyson bit him, this time on the neck. Meanwhile, as you see Holyfield moving back into the corner in a state of disbelief with his ear, that is the other side, that's the good ear at the moment. Uh, Holyfield is incredulous. Mills Lane, of course, was the last minute substitute referee. Mitch Halpern may be the luckiest man on earth tonight. He's at home watching it right then and there. Mills Lane calling a, uh, a stoppage while that is the uh, ring doctor, Dr. Flip Hamansky, looking at the ear. And so as a result, by the time Mike Tyson bit Evander Holyfield a second time, a second time, he was disqualified and Holyfield maintains his WBA title. This is, when you try to handicap a fight, you don't figure biting into the equation. And I think inevitably the first question has to be asked about the well, the 
the condition of Mike Tyson in his head. He seemed to have completely lost it, Buster. You know, Charlie, John, it's, it's been a bizarre night. Um, you can actually say that, you know, the pressure you know, has obviously has just overwhelmed Mike Tyson. I, you know, right now, I don't know what to say, you know, I'm just drawing a blank here to try to figure out what was the reason for him to lose it like that. Let's go back to the beginning of the evening as they left the locker room, as we were talking and watching on our monitors in front of us. We kept saying how serene and almost businesslike Mike Tyson looked. That was the good news. The bad news was that was so uncharacteristic of the Mike Tyson we'd ever seen before. Now, Mike Tyson did not enter the ring, Charlie, in that same manner he's used to, kind of seething, walking towards the ring with a ferocity. We saw Mike Tyson almost looking tentative as he entered the ring. And consequently, I think Tyson, as the fight began, really was taking his time. He looked very nervous in, to be in the ring with Evander Holyfield. Once he started getting hit, even it looked like Tyson started going into an immediate shell. I think Mike Tyson knew he was going to get knocked out again tonight, Charlie. He just totally lost it. You know, the first thought that pops into my mind as you say that, is this the modern day no moss? Is this a, is, is Mike Tyson's way of saying, okay, I can't beat this guy, and so I, I've lost it in my own head and gone off and done a completely irrational act twice? Charlie, John, I tell you, man, I. <laughs> I'm really drawing a blank here, but I think the pressure, the pressure must have been so overwhelming because early on in the fight, I gave Mike Tyson the benefit of the doubt. I figured he was going into a technical thing because you know, everybody was a sure bet for him to just come blasting out, throwing big shots, trying to get Holyfield early. But then, you know, he came out sort of, you know, content, just moving, slipping, and he started using his upper body movement, you know, digging, you know, showing his regular shots, digging to the body, coming and up he, with the double. he got nailed with a straight right hand. The most potent fight or punch of the fight was right. in the first he round was winning by Holyfield. That, yeah, he was, to me, it seemed like he was winning until to that point. Until that point, until Holyfield landed the big shot. But, you know, he came out in the second round again. He was still trying to, you know, I seen him trying to pick the pace up. But between... Somewhere in that second round, he just, he lost it. You know, he literally lost it. And then it's a, it's well, the, I think we now know why Tyson's camp was so irritated and agitated coming into this week. Mike Tyson's camp, they were desperate. They knew their fighter, in retrospect, was not right for this fight. There were a lot of questions about Mike Tyson's psychological state. I think some of those questions were answered here tonight. Not only does Mike Tyson appear to be a desperate fighter, he appears to be a desperate human being in need of some help. And there had been so much question about the stability of Mike Tyson coming into this fight, especially with the whole controversy over referee Mitch Halpern, which seemed so out of character for the self-proclaimed baddest man on the planet to be concerned about a referee. Yeah, that was definitely a desperate tactic. You know, he had no reason at all to, you know, question Halpern's um, abilities because, you know, he fought, a, he, he refereed an excellent fight the first time out in, in the fight one. So therefore, I would have to agree with with you, Charlie and, and John, that he was a little, they were worried about Mike. You know, they wanted to have somebody in there to look over him somehow. Uh, you know, it's, it's a shame how it ended up. Needless to say, this is going to be a most eventful evening, and we have just begun. Later on, of course, Evander Holyfield will certainly arrive here for a press conference. We can expect that Mike Tyson will. The news has just begun, and it will continue through the night. We are live from Las Vegas. Evander Holyfield has defended his title in a most bizarre fashion, and we'll see you a little bit later on. Let's go back to the studio. All right, Charlie, we're going to continue our coverage on ESPN2. We're going to go back to arena football shortly, but a couple of comments here. I mean, we were seeing Evander Holyfield. He's missing a piece of his ear. He's got bites in each of his ears. This is a guy that's on prison time. I don't know that Mike Tyson should ever be allowed to box again. Ironic, and they were touching on it as well, maybe not ironic, uh, but bizarre, that Tyson's camp was the one that objected to the referee, right. and Mike goes out and does something like that. But uh, boxing is considered a barbaric sport. I mean, is there anything more barbaric than biting off uh, a piece of another man's ear? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And uh, we'll get more reaction, of course, throughout the night. We'll bring it to you on ESPN2 and also back here on ESPN during Arena Football. But there you see the decision. It was a pretty well-contested fight, but then Mike Tyson just lost control, spit his mouthpiece out, deliberately bit Evander Holyfield, took a chunk out of one ear, also damaged the other. And now one of his handlers is saying that,
Holyfield was constantly headbutting, and that's illegal. That's his initial reasoning for what happened. Now, let's take it back to on ESPN, San Jose and New Jersey in arena football here on ESPN2. We'll continue our fight coverage. We welcome those of you watching now on ESPN, Steve Levy and Gary Miller, a third round disqualification. Evander Holyfield gets the best of Mike Tyson. He's missing part of his ear, but not missing anything is our Charlie Steiner in the press room wondering if anyone will show up. Charlie? Well, we do know that Don Turner, who is Evander Holyfield's trainer, is here. We have not heard from him yet. He's on the podium, and when he speaks, of course, you will hear about it. But tonight, if you're just joining us, a most unusual boxing event. You know, we've been covering this business for a good long time, and this is something we frankly have never seen before. Heavyweight championship fight, and a man is disqualified for biting his opponent's ear, and then, after being warned, don't do it again, he bit him on the neck. And let's take a look at the highlights and see how it happened. Holyfield had won the first two rounds, and this is now the third round. John, you want to take over? Well, you see Tyson trying to come on with a vengeance, Charlie, because he knows he's behind. And in this clinch coming up right here, you will see Tyson turn his head and rip a piece of Holyfield's ear right off. You see Holyfield lurch back, and then the ensuing melee in the ring. The melee in the ring did turn ugly as security forces stormed the ring to try to bring some sense of order. Tyson wanted to get a piece not only of Evander Holyfield's ear, but of his uh, trainer, athletic trainer, Tim Hallmark. And so you see the official notification that Holyfield maintains his title, but he has lost a piece of his ear. And in the process, he is now on his way to a local hospital for either some plastic surgery or some stitching. Mike Tyson has left the building. We will not be hearing from him at all. This is uh, Tyson. He suffered a gash over his right eye, and that happened in the second round. And that's so incensed Tyson, or at least that's what Tyson and his uh, managers have said, that that's where he lost it. John? Well, I think Mike Tyson lost it last November when, frankly, Evander Holyfield took his heart, took his will, and took his skills and stuffed them in his back pocket. That's when Tyson lost this fight. It wasn't tonight, Charlie. Mike Tyson went into this fight very skeptical, I think, psychologically, like a lot of people, exactly how he would deal with Evander Holyfield. We saw him fight the first couple of rounds almost very tactfully, very strategically. Buster and I talked about it off camera during the fights. Buster kind of thought that Mike was taking his time, picking his shots. But Mike Tyson, to me, looked like a fighter who was past his prime, we should be out of the business. Heavy stuff. Buster, there's that whole notion about Mike Tyson and the fear factor, the bully. And once the bully is beaten, he never really does get it back together again. And well, do you buy into that theory? Well, as of February of 1990, you could say that's it started to be the part, the tarnishing part, you know, where, you know, the invincibility, because after our fight, you know, the invincibility started wearing off. I mean, he, he got beat. Uh, very handily, but you know, as John said earlier, we were talking about it between between round one and round two that you know Mike didn't come out as we thought with that fierce, with that intensity. He thought it was going to be a very tactical fight, but now it just seems as though Mike was just clearly just outman, outgun, out chest, you know, out, out and at least temporarily out of his mind. And that, that's the thing that I guess is probably most disturbing about what we've seen here tonight. We will continue our coverage throughout the night on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN News. Stick with us. The fun has just begun. All right, thanks, guys. Missing an ear, another black eye for boxing. It was a disgrace, really. And what happened is they won on a disqualification in the third round. They'd already stopped the fight for four minutes, came out and bit his ear again, and Evander Holyfield retains his title. Stay tuned to ESPN, but now more arena football. Welcome back, Steve Levy, Gary Miller here in our Sports Center studios on ESPN and ESPN2. Wild night in Las Vegas. Headbutting is an accepted yet illegal fashion of form in boxing. Of course, biting is not, and that's what disqualified Mike Tyson tonight. Yeah, you know, when they first met, it was a headbutt in the sixth round, the first time Tyson had ever been cut. Well, tonight he got cut over the right eye. 
bit his Holyfield's ear twice, was disqualified, and now Evander Holyfield is 13-2 in title fights. Tyson falls to 12-3. For more reaction, let's go out to Las Vegas and the latest with Charlie Steiner. Let us update you now on what has been a most bizarre evening, one of the most bizarre in a very bizarre sport in history. Mike Tyson was disqualified at the end of the third round tonight when he took a chunk, quite literally, bit a chunk out of Evander Holyfield's ear. He was disqualified by referee Mills Lane, who of course himself was a last-minute substitute because the Tyson camp didn't want Mitch Halpern to be the referee, so they got Mills Lane, and so Lane promptly disqualified Tyson for biting, Holy, uh, biting Evander Holyfield twice, first in the ear in which he took a chunk out, and then he bit him in the neck. Let me update you a couple of, on a couple of stories now as far as Evander Holyfield and his ear is concerned. The piece of the ear that is missing was found mysteriously and remarkably on the mat of the ring. It was wrapped in a uh, towel, and then it and Holyfield went to the hospital together. They're going to try and reattach it. It is bizarre, but true. Not only that, now the Nevada State Athletic Commission, we are told, at least according to a wire report from the Associated Press, has declared they are withholding Mike Tyson's $30 million purse, a $30 million bite of an ear. So now let's take a look at see how it all happened. It was in the third round in which Holyfield was winning the fight. But Tyson said he was so enraged by what he considered to be excessive headbutting by Holyfield, he took a chunk out of Evander Holyfield's ear, and Holyfield went crazy. And then, so did Mike Tyson, who then wanted to go after Holyfield's corner. State police and local security guards stormed the ring to try to maintain some peace. They were moderately successful in that. Based on the scoring, Holyfield was winning the fight anyway. All three judges had the score that we did. Holyfield winning the first two rounds, 10-9, 10-9, and then 9-8 in the second round because the two points uh, uh, disqualification of the points by uh, Mills Lane. So now, let us get some reaction from the two fighters, and we begin with Evander Holyfield. The whole thing is that I mean, it's just an easy way to get out of the fight, the foul, because you know you're going to get disqualified instead of fighting through. I mean, that don't show no courage whatsoever. Everybody know how to get out of the fight. All you have to do is foul. You'll get yourself out. Then you can say, well, he didn't beat me. Um, he butted me um, in the first round, but then he butted me again in the second round. Then as soon as he butted me, I watched him. He had me holding, and he looked right at me, and I saw him, and he was going for it, and he kept going fine. He butted me again. He kept going down and coming up, and he t charged into me. And no one warned him. No one gave him, took any points for him. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. Like I got children to raise, and this guy keeps butting me, trying to cut me and get me stopped on cut. I got to retaliate. <laughs> We are joined now by the chief trainer for Evander Holyfield, Don Turner. Don, quickly, give us a sense of what you saw, what you are thinking, and what you are feeling right now. I saw him bite his ear off. Oh, it was the most incredible thing that I've ever seen in all my years of boxing. Uh, I think it. I think he should be suspended. I think that he should be taken for some kind of evaluation. I think he should be fined a huge amount of money, maybe his whole purse. Uh, he was headed for greatness, what we call, until he ran into the guy that's next to me here and Buster Douglas beat him. But from the very beginning, I told everybody that, that he wasn't as good as people thought he was. I spotted some flaws in him. I, you know, Evander exploited him. And here we are. Evander's in the hospital, and Tyson is probably partying now. Don, let me ask you, when you were preparing this fight, actually when you were pre preparing the first fight as well, to what extent did you consider Tyson's psychological profile? Well, I knew that it was a very hard punch and he was hit very hard. Lightning speed, reflexes, and quick hands. I never thought about mu what much he was thinking. I just knew that if he got pressure put on him, he would find a way to quit. 
Don, Evander Holyfield is known as a very poised individual and fighter. Have you ever seen him that angry than when after Tyson bit him off in the year? No. When Mills Lane was hesitant to do it, he told Mills Lane, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to knock him out. And he was very close to doing it until Tyson grabs his other ear to bite him. Did, did you see, Tyson is complaining that the opening of that cut that he suffered in sparring was caused by a headbutt. Do you know if it was a punch or, or a clash of heads that caused that? When two guys is in there fighting like that, you know they get hit. Uh, he hit Holyfield with one great left hook. Holyfield hit him with a couple of great right hands. I mean, uh, I don't think it was a butt, but uh, if they want to call it a butt, maybe it was. I got to look at the replay. I don't think that uh, Tyson wanted to fight. That was his way out. Don, do you think there are any possibilities, and under what possible consideration would there be a third fight with uh, Mike Tyson, or is this, is this chapter now closed, do you suppose? I think it's, you know, I think it's closed. You know, but uh, it's a shame that things like this happen in boxing. You know, I'm, I'm a guy that was a bad guy. You know, I was a bad guy. I just never did anything like that. You know, that was very unprofessional. Uh, I'm just mystified by it. Don, if you had a fighter who was being headbutted, how would you tell him to retaliate in the corner? Tyson is saying that this was the only way he could retaliate because Mills Lane wasn't doing anything about it. How would you tell your fighter to deal with that? First of all, I wouldn't tell him to headbutt. I wouldn't tell a fighter anything that's going to hurt, you know, that's going to damage another fighter's health. Th that's not my style. Uh, that was a bad thing that happened. That was a real bad thing. Do you think in its own way, as we were suggesting earlier, perhaps you agree, maybe you don't, that Tyson taking a chunk out of Evander's ear was his, his no moss? Fair, probably. I don't know. You can never know what's on another person's mind. You know, I'm not going to sit here and try to analyze it. You know, everybody, the world saw what he did. I saw what he did. You know, it, it's inexcusable, but it happened. So we have to deal with what we have. You know, it happened, and we'll see what kind of punishment they're going to render to him. Don, Mike Tyson has now been defeated twice by Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield seems to want to keep fighting as a professional fighter. What's next for Evander? Maybe Tyson. How about Michael Moore? Would that, is he interested in avenging well, his loss I don't know. It's, maybe, it's a day-to-day -day situation. Evander might say uh, that that's it. He didn't prove that he's probably one of the greatest heavyweights ever lived, like I said all the time. Plus, he's a good human being. You know, it, it, it's amazing that a guy that was so, supposed to have been washed up, an old man, uh, showed so much strength and poise under, which is supposed to be the baddest man on the planet. Let me ask you something quickly about the fight prior to the bite. Was Evander fighting the fight you had instructed and had pretty much had, uh, was that the game plan tonight, with what we saw to that point? Yeah, we just told him to step up with his jab, faint him, and, he could, and, and, he, and you would faint him right into the right hand, which you saw it happen. You know, Evander liked to throw a left hook, so he fainted him a couple times and threw a left hook, but Tyson was getting away from him. But it was a left hook, probably, that opened the cup. Don, you just heard Mills Lane say in the background that when Tyson told him I was butted, Mills said to him, I know you were butted, an unintentional butt. So are you saying that Evander Holyfield did not butt Mike Tyson intentionally, or you didn't see it? I'm, I'm saying I didn't see the butt. You know, I didn't see the butt. It probably could have been, and like I said earlier, that if we go to the videotape, I might see the butt. But I didn't see it. I don't think that was any reason to bite the guy's ear off. Don Turner, who is the uh, trainer for Evander Holyfield. Meanwhile, referee Mills Lane had some comments about how it all came about that he called for the disqualification at the end of the third round. The first bite was you could see the... Um, you could actually see the teeth marks, uh, the indent in the ear. And um, so I told, uh, uh, I, I called the doctor up, and the doctor said he could continue. The bite itself was cosmetically bad, but the fight could go on. So I penalized uh, another point, which meant a two-point deduction, one for the push, one for the 
first bite, and then they fought some more, and they got another kind of a skirmish, if you will, a little bit of wrestling around, and then after that, the, a bandit jumped back again and uh, grabbed his ear, and I looked, and you could see another bite mark, and I said, okay, that's it. All right, so we want to thank Don Turner for coming up here and joining us tonight. And of course, this is Buster Douglas, along with John Saracino. I'm Charlie Steiner. Our continuing coverage of this most bizarre evening will continue a little bit later on. For now, we go back to the studio. Thanks, guys. There were unconfirmed reports that there was a wild training session at South Beach and Ferraris and Lamborghinis for Tyson, and Holyfield's been training since January. Their first fight was called up in 91 because of prison. I thought it was interesting that we heard from Mike Tyson, and he did not offer up as an excuse, hey, heat of the moment, didn't realize what I was doing. He knew full well what he was doing. He was trying to retaliate for the headbutt, and he knowingly bit him in the ear. That's... Kind yeah, of a sick thing right there. It's amazing. And Evander Holyfield retains his WBA title. Full coverage coming up later on our networks. On Sports Center at 2.30 Eastern, Arena Football continues on ESPN. Indy Lights on the Deuce. Experience. And, have a, and having a young referee in there could have caused a lot of chaos in the fight. Emmanuel, let me get back to something you said earlier. You said that the call to make a bite might have come from Tyson's corner. Remember at the start of the third round, he didn't have his mouthpiece in. Does that maybe substantiate your claim that he was thinking about it even then? I don't know. It, it could be. It, it seemingly, the, the fight was moving in a direction where Mike was getting a little fatigued, a little frustrated. Uh, he seemingly didn't have a plan, neither. And uh, I think that it could have been something that he had just faced. Like Holyfield said, maybe it was a way of getting out of it gracefully, controversially, but he didn't lose. He didn't get knocked out, so to say. Uh, I don't know. I Emmanuel, think... let me cut in here real quick. The Nevada State Athletic Commission is making a sure. statement. Let's go to the podium. is temporarily suspended. His purse will be held pending a disciplinary healing. The Nevada Athletic Commission will hold an emergency meeting at 10 o'clock uh, July 1st, 1997 at the Las Vegas City Hall Council Chambers to review and discuss the events of this evening. The Nevada Athletic Commission will also consider formal disciplinary action against Mike Tyson at that time. If the Nevada Athletic Commission decides to proceed with a complaint against Mike Tyson, then he will be given not less than 30 days notice of the hearing pursuant to the Nevada Revised Statute 467156 to appear in front of the commission. We'll be glad to answer any questions. Have him stand up, what, what? Do Dr. Ghanem. It, in reality, uh, can, doesn't Nevada law per, uh, forbid you from withholding more than 250,000 ultimately? No, no, it's not. It's not, it's not, not true. We, 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 we can take 10 percent, whichever is greater, according to our attorney general's uh, opinion. What they filed 30 million, right? Exactly. 30. Uh, Mike, Mike Tice, they filed with the Nevada Athletic Commission a 30 million dollar purse. That's correct. That is correct. Hi, uh, Jacqueline Frazier, uh, Philadelphia Sunday Sun. Uh, is you, if you've decided to file uh, some sort of formal complaint, is this like uh, some sort of preliminary for some sort of possibility for a, a criminal prosecution? Is that a possibility? Well. Uh, the, yeah, it's not. It's not for the commission to decide this. It's, that's that's up to the district attorney's office. Yeah. Yes. Ren Petro, the sports fan radio network. Uh, can you can you confirm if uh, Mike Tyson actually took a swing at a police officer, one of the Las Vegas police officers, and did have a fight? And do you have any jurisdiction over that? Or is that something the police department would take up on their own? I think that's the, the jurisdiction the police department have to have on their own. Would someone care to comment on this? Anybody who feels uh, it's appropriate to comment? If they feel in their mind, from a legal standpoint, this is a violation of parole on any level? In any of this no. behavior? <laughs> it's, not, it's not for us. This is not for the Nevada Athletic Commission to decide that. There are 
are no more, no more questions. Thank you very much. So the Nevada State Athletic Commission uh, withholding the entire purse that Mike Tyson was to receive, $30 million, and he is immediately suspended for the time being. And they will have a hearing July 1st to, to discuss this matter further. Uh, there's going to be more coming up. Uh, Nevada Holyfield's trainer, Don Turner, is stepping to the podium. Uh, he'll be there in a moment. Uh, but this is certainly an interesting uh, train of events. Uh, let's go to the podium now, and Don Turner stepping up to the mic. Don. Don, Don. Can you hear me? Don. 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 Do you think uh, Tyson was looking for a way out? You saw it. He did find a way out. If he didn't find a way out, he was going to get stopped anyway. Don, do you think that Evander will consider fighting Mike Tyson ever again? Do you think I should answer that question? Don. No. <laughs> can I can Don. I ask your opinion after viewing what you've seen in the last hour? What's your opinion of Mike Tyson as a boxer? The same as you guys said, he was great. <laughs> he just can't beat Devon the Holyfield. Don, what? A Tyson came out for the third round without his mouthpiece, and Evander pointed it out to Mills Lane. Did he fear getting bit by Mike Tyson? Did he say anything prior to the round? No. We wanted, to, uh, Tommy and myself was talking to Mills about the fight should be stopped and the guy should be disqualified. He said, put my mouthpiece in, I'm going out and knock him out. Sean, have you ever seen anything like this? Uh, oh. Don, here. Have you ever seen anything like this, that kind of display? In Harlem. <laughs> Don. Don, right over here. Don. Hello, Don. Hey, Don. Hello, sir. Here's my man, Don. Sir. Pete Allman, Talk America Radio Network, Celebrity Scene News. He, uh, Holyfield had a point taken away for shoving. Give me your thoughts about the tie-ups and what was going on with the tie-ups, because Evander was also, shall we say, pushing. Who told you that Holyfield had a point taken away for Shelby? No, I, you didn't listen. I said Mike Tyson had a point taken away for pushing. My question to you is, what are your feelings about Evander? He was also pushing in the tie-ups. He didn't get a point taken away, though. <laughs> Sir, no matter what you're feeling, I'm Bill Tatum, publisher of the Amsterdam News in Harlem, and we've been publishing there for 90 years, covering both fighters fairly. I resent the implication about Harlem. I don't know whether you've been there, walked our streets, or lived there, but that is not a joke, sir, and I do not appreciate it. accept that but it was in jest I used to live in Harlem Don Eric Tracy Fox News Channel what were the extent of the injuries to either one of the years what think Don Turner done? is saying obviously uh, interesting situation he knows that his fighter there's no way that according to him Mike Tyson could beat Evander Holyfield and that's why he did what he did we want to go down to Nick Charles who is standing by with the referee Mills Lane Nick Mills you were supposed to be mowing your lawn today this is a far cry from that well, my wife moves the lawn. I don't do that. Oh, really? Right. Did you, uh, you told us last night you weren't going to take any crap, to quote you. That's did right. you ever expect anything like this? No, sir. Never did. Uh, never expected it. But uh, the best they can do is deal with whatever comes up. And it comes up and you deal with it. Well, I mean, with Tyson, uh, is this an unprecedented thing, in your opinion, in the ring? You've never seen anything like this yourself? I've never seen anything like this. And I think that, uh, you know, in everything you do in life, you have to have discipline. Everything takes discipline. Boxing takes discipline. You have to have discipline, and these guys got to learn something. When you warned him about the headbutt, I mean, you told it was inadvertent, and you told uh, Giacchetti and you told the corner of Tyson that it was an inadvertent butt. Right. Holofield was well aware of it, of course. Right. Well, what, what were you reading in Tyson at that point? I mean, he was clearly frustrated. Well, he was frustrated, but I thought that Evander had a good a second round and Mike had a good third round. So, I mean, the fight, it was a, it, I don't think the fight was clear the outcome at all. I think there was some frustration, which apparently he couldn't deal with right then, but, uh, you know, I... 
It's easy for me to say, I guess, to speculate, but I wasn't, I'm not him, so I don't know. Well, you pulled the plug and you didn't even think twice the second time. Oh, no, once the second bite, that was it. And that was the end of the hunt. You were a Nevada judge up north in this state. Right. Uh, Tyson was swinging at people. Things, pandemonium broke out. Afterwards, when he left here, he threatened to kill somebody. I mean, what's your read on this man as a person? Well, I don't know that I'm competent to speak to that. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I just think that, you know, he has to make peace with himself and do what he has to do. I think that if he kills somebody in this state, uh, you know, he's big time. So I don't think he'd want to do that. Well, Mills Lane, you did what you had to do. I did what I thought was right. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Mills Lane made $10,000 for this fight. He earned it the hard way. That's the story to the moment. Between the camps, we've got it. We've got to just stop it. Where does the process go for you from now? You're obviously going to get the videotape of the fight and take a look at it to see what happened, correct? That's correct. And then, and then we go right to Tuesday morning in the, our emergency meeting. Okay. Any idea, do you think, of, of what might happen? I mean, we know where what your stance is now, but there are obviously some very obvious signs that there was a, some savage biting going on on Evander Holyfield there. Uh, I don't speculate on that. That's It's commission uh, business, and they'll, they'll do the appropriate thing. It's just... Uh, as I said, tarnishes what should have been the most wonderful night in the history of the sport. All right, Mark, thanks for your time. We thanks. appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break on CNNSI and return to Las Vegas right after this. Okay. Iron Mike, real deal Holyfield, the sound. You think he's in it with some bully, some punk? I'm going to show him what a bully does. The Fury. Pressure never stops. Pressure never stops. Round two. That's right, Bill. You know what? It was more humble, Mike Tyson, in the first fight. But guess what? It was humble here again. Humble, it doesn't win belts. What does? I can tell you what doesn't. Charlie Steiner sinks his teeth into our coverage. It was a night like no other in heavyweight boxing history. Evander Holyfield successfully defended his WBA crown against Mike Tyson, all right, but he also lost a chunk of his right ear when Mike Tyson took a bite out of it. Tyson was immediately disqualified, his purse of approximately $30 million withheld and suspended by the Nevada State Athletic Commission pending an emergency hearing next week. The action was fast and furious for the first two rounds. Holyfield winning them, but in the third round, a frustrated and irate Mike Tyson went after Holyfield and took a bite out of his right ear, right there. A piece of his ear went flying to the ground after he was disqualified by Mills Lane. Mike Tyson wanted to go after not only the security force, but Evander Holyfield's corner. So when all was said and done, Tyson was disqualified. He lost the fight. Evander Holyfield wins. He was winning all three rounds, especially the third round when Tyson was taken, had t two points taken away from his score. After the fight, we talked to a host of people beginning with Mike Tyson. First um, he butted me um, in the first round, but then he butted me again in the second round. Then as soon as he butted me, I watched him. He had me holding, and he looked right at me, and I saw him, and he was going for, and he kept going flying. And he butted me again. He kept going down and coming up, and he t charged into me. And no one warned him. No one gave him, took any points for him. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. Like, I got children to raise, and this guy keeps butting me, trying to cut me and get me stopped on cut. I got to retaliate. The whole thing is that um, it's just an easy way to get out of the fight, the foul. Because you know you're going to get disqualified still fighting through. I'm saying that don't show no courage to whatsoever. Everybody know how to get out of the fight. All you got to do is foul. You'll get yourself out. Then you can say, well, he didn't beat me. I think, it, I think he should be suspended. I think that he should be taken for some kind of evaluation. I think he should be fined a huge amount of money, maybe his whole purse. Then they got back into it and then Evander they jumped back and I, I could see blood come from his ear and he said he bit me so i looked and you could actually see bite marks in the ear called time brought the doctor in and they wanted to disqualify then to see if the fight could continue flip romancy said he can continue he can fight so I said okay that's going to cost you another point two point deduction in that round that's the, so they get back into it again Another rough stuff on the inside, the man that jumped back, then he bit me again. Look at the other ear. The same, not as bad a bite, but the same type of, of, of injury. I said, okay, that's it. 
I've been the longest boxing week I've ever had. Uh, I've been through the fan man. I've been through Oliver McCall. I've been through bizarre scoring. Uh, guys hit after the bell, disqualifications. But uh, this is, uh, I hate to say it, so far the most bizarre thing I've seen. And depressing, he also said. Mark Ratner, the executive director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, joined, of course, by John Saraceno and Buster Douglas. It was a depressing night. It was, it was to watch a guy like Mike Tyson become so unglued, it was, it was scary. And then, of course, the, the aftermath where there was a near riot in the ring. Well, Charlie, we were kind of expecting the fight of the year, possibly. Instead, we got the bite of the year. Mike Tyson became mentally unglued in this fight and appeared to want a way out. And that was a disqualification. He was being manhandled basically for the first two and a half rounds by Evander Holyfield. We saw Holyfield doing the same kinds of things he did in the first fight, pushing him around. Tyson was missing wildly with the right hand. Tyson showed a total uh, lack of self-control, which a fighter must have at all times. Back in 1980, when Roberto Duran pulled the no mas against Sugar Ray Leonard in New Orleans, the popular theory was that Duran couldn't beat Leonard that night, and he knew it, and the only way out was to quit and not give Leonard the satisfaction of winning. That apparently was the feeling Evander Holyfield had tonight about Mike Tyson. Was that the feeling you had, Buster? Well, when the fight first started off, you know, I noticed immediately that Mike did not lunge out and come with a fierce attack with a bobbing and weaving that I so, th I, I th so thought he would do. But instead, he came out real content with just bobbing and weaving and just picking his shots. And then immediately I told John, I said, well, you know, it's going to be a tactical fight in between the rounds. But as the fight progressed, you, you started seeing, well, you really didn't see it coming. You just were just waiting for something to happen. And then I immediately thought it was going to go into the later round. What was interesting, though, was it was a fight in which Mike Tyson fought out of character. This was not the Mike Tyson we had seen before, and he absorbed a very strong, stiff, straight right hand in the first round. He definitely fought out of character. I mean, it was obvious that it wasn't a Mike Tyson that you've seen in the past, and it was something that I thought maybe they were they, they came up with in his training camp, you know, with the addition of Giacchetti, you know. But uh, it seems that he was totally baffled and confused. And I think early on, when when Evander was pushing and shoving him, uh, he started seeing he started seeing the end. So Evander Holyfield has gone to the hospital to get his ear reattached. What now for Mike Tyson? Well, Mike Tyson really needs to be watched the next few days and tonight and tomorrow. He's got to be watched closely. Mike Tyson is a very upset man, and we know he has a history of losing self-control. Mike Tyson, the people out there who love him need to be with him. I know there's a lot of people are going to be down on him right now, and justifiably so, based on what we saw in the ring tonight. So for the moment, Mike Tyson is suspended. His $30 million purse is being withheld pending a hearing next week. We will have much more on Holyfield Tyson 2 coming up a little later on. All right, thank you very much, guys. And like Charlie said, later on, back to Vegas for this bizarre bite and bout. Mike Tyson went from fighting mad to biting mad. Sports Center has a piece of the action for you when we come back. A disgrace, Mike Tyson leaving the arena just a short time after he was disqualified in the rematch with Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield was taken to the hospital to have a portion of his right ear reattached. We are with uh, John Saraceno and Buster Douglas, and sadly, the fight before the moment of the disqualification was an interesting tactical fight. Mike Tyson began the fight somewhat laid back, Buster. Yeah, he did. He was very hesitant to my surprise. I thought that Mike would come out, you know, a lot more faster, a lot more shots, you know, a lot more movement, but uh, he came out really, you know, subdued. You know, he's real subdued. Another thing, Buster, was that Mike Tyson did throw a couple wild right hands. He did not connect, but boy, Evander Holyfield hit him with a right hand, and there it is in the first round that sent Tyson stumbling backwards, and that was a telling blow of that round. That was the most devastating punch of the fight thrown by either man. In the second round, in the corner, Evander Holyfield an accidental butt, as it was ruled by referee Mills Lane. And you see, immediately Tyson began to complain to Mills Lane 
Mills Lane ruled it an unintentional headbutt and instructed the fighters to go on. You saw Tyson bleeding there from around the same injury that he suffered in sparring a couple of months ago. Well, it opened up immediately also. You know, when he got hit, you know, when they separated, the blood was, you know, you could see the cut immediately where it had opened up. And then Mike had started picking up the pace too. He started throwing shots and was getting a little more aggressive. And in round three, actually Tyson, that was his best round of the three, uh, of the three until the point of the disqualification. Yeah, he got angered, so he picked up his intensity, but I think he just got a little too much intense, you know. He started going with the dirty tactics with that uh, biting on the air to everybody's and surprise. This, this now was the beginning of the end of the fight. See Tyson trying to drop that lead right hand in, Charlie. And both fighters have been wrestling a lot in the fight. This is what was happening since the beginning of the fight. Tyson finally got tired of Holyfield supposedly butting him unintentionally and holding him. You saw Tyson bite him on the air, and there everything breaks loose in the ring. Well, the state police were in the ring. The uh, security guards from the MGM Grand were in the ring. A melee ensued. There was no significant damage done. Mike Tyson taken to the corner by his uh, his friend Anthony Pitts, who is also his security guard. So Holyfield officially wins it on a third round disqualification. Now the question is, what about Mike Tyson and his well-being? This this was such a bizarre turn of events. You know, when you try to handicap a fight. Biting somebody's ear off isn't part of the equation, John. Well, we talked earlier about how Mike Tyson lost his self-control. And you know what? Early in Mike Tyson's career, he was a very disciplined fighter. When he was 20 years old, 21 years old, the youngest heavyweight champion in the world, he was very focused. We saw that slowly dissipate from Mike Tyson's career as the money, the marriage, the troubles began when he left his management team. And then, of course, when he went into prison. The Tyson that came out of prison was not the same fighter. And as time went on, and then certainly with the Evander Holyfield fight in November, Tyson appeared to unravel mentally, Charlie. Buster, you, uh, you have a unique perspective having fought him uh, back in 1990. Give us a sense from what you see of the Tyson then and the Tyson now. Well, the Tyson then was a very di disciplined fighter, much as, uh, as he is now. But somewhere along the line, I think the pressures have gotten to Mike to where you know, it's overwhelming to him. You know, it's like in the sense of a guy, if a guy, for example, does hit you with a headbutt, then you would immediately turn it around, but you would use it to your benefit. You know, it would be a more positive reaction instead of something bizarre as, you know, resorting to the same dirty tactic as you felt that you had been placed upon you. But, uh, you know, it's just sad that this had occurred, you know, and I just hope for the best for Mike, really. Fight of the year turned out to be one of the more bizarre stories in all of sports this year. Later on, we'll discuss what's next for Evander Holyfield and the heavyweight division when we come back to Las Vegas. As bizarre nights go, this may have been the most bizarre in heavyweight championship history. Evander Holyfield is still champion, but he's missing a piece of his ear. We are joined by, as usual, John Saraceno and James Buster Douglas. Let's begin and take a look down the road some. What is next for Evander Holyfield once he gets his tetanus shot and his ear reattached? Well, Charlie, Evander Holyfield has a lot of options, but I think retirement might be one of them. Holyfield in the past has talked about retiring, but I don't think he wanted to talk about it before this fight because he would always lose focus and then have a poor performance. I think that's an option Evander will seriously consider. Beyond that, he could fight Michael Moore in a rematch. He could fight Lennox Lewis. And hey, how about giving this guy a shot next to me, Buster Douglas? I don't think Buster wanted to hear anything about retirement. But <laughs> Not at all. No, what, what, what is your sense? How's this thing going to play out? You know, I just hope that uh, indeed that, you know, it would come down to the fact that, that I would be next in line to get a shot to fight the winner of tonight's, tonight's bout. I would find it most intriguing, you know, and I, I've been having a successful comeback. And uh, it'll just be an ample opportunity for Ben and I to get it on. Now let's take a look at Mike Tyson and where he goes and how they're going to build him back up again after after this just 
disgraceful performance tonight. Well, that's a, a tall order, even for Team Tyson. Mike Tyson, first of all, has to get mentally right. He's got to be mentally sound and decide if really he wants to fight anymore, Charlie. I'm not so sure that's the case with Mike Tyson. Beyond that, Mike Tyson has got to resume the kind of regimen he used to have. And he, frankly, he's probably beyond that at this point. He's a multimillionaire many times over. James, you know as well as anybody about the delicate psyche of a fighter when he loses desi his desire to fight. Did you get any sense of that in watching Mike Tyson? Well, we might have seen it, might have seen it all tonight. You know, a, a fighter come to the come to the end, but all the pressures and everything that's applied upon him, and then he has to go out and perform. You know, it just might have been a, a, a total terrible mental breakdown. One of the things I think that is most unusual about Saturday night, in all the years that we've been covering this sport, one thing you could bank on after a Don King fight, you would hear from Don King. He was conspicuous by his absence in the press tent and how he's going to spin this thing for his man, whose purse, incidentally, has been withheld by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Will be a fascinating story to follow in the next couple of days, John. Well, Don King always comes up with a good storyline. I'm sure right now he is very depressed. I'm sure he's going to come up with some kind of a plan, as he always does, because nobody outworks Don King. He will come up with something, Charlie. Well, that's going to be a wrap for us here in Las Vegas. It has been an extraordinary week. As we told you, Evander Holyfield is in the hospital. They're attempting to reattach a portion of his right ear. We will have much more on the Holyfield story later on in the morning on uh, Sports Weekly and Sports Center. So for now, for Buster Douglas and John Saracino, I'm Charlie Steiner. Let's go back to the studio. Sports Center is brought to you by Gold Premium Beer, proud sponsors of Holyfield Tyson 2. It was perhaps the most bizarre of endings to a championship contest of any kind. In a sport where the combatants use their fists to decide the outcome, Mike Tyson used his teeth. Fighting Evander Holyfield twice in the year, he was disqualified the third round. After the fight, Holyfield was taken to Valley Hospital for treatment. Our Mark Schwartz was there. Okay, with Evander Holyfield. Evander, first of all, how are you feeling and how is your ear? How are both of your ears? Well, I feel good and, uh, you know, I thank the Lord that it's not as bad as it appeared to be at the time that he, he bit both of my ears. Did you feel like your ear was bitten off completely when this first bite occurred? Well, the first bite I did. I, you know, I was, you know, it, it, it hurt so bad that when I went to the corner, I was frustrated. And, uh, and my corner people were saying, you know, just relax, man. Just, just relax. Pray. And, you know, and, and I was able to relax. And, and that's the only reason I went back out there. And I'm glad I, you know, they probably would have disqualified me if I wouldn't have fought. But more, they would say, you know, the, the guy took the easy route out. But, you know, you know, after I was able to get focused, you know, I, I went back out there. You know, but I went back out there to, you know, really try to get the fight over. And uh, I caught him with a good shot. Then he bit my other ear. Did you dream that he would bite you a second time, or did you think that was just a momentary lapse by Tyson? I, I thought it was a momentary lapse. You know, you, you start thinking that things like that can happen. But, you know, for twice, you know, when, when, it, happened th when it happened that last time, you know, my only thing, I completely lost it. My only thing is that it wasn't even to a point of swinging the gloves anymore. You know, I'm ready to tackle him and, and throw him down and all that. I'm just glad that, you know, Mill Lane did the proper thing. Would you even dream of giving Mike Tyson a rematch? And if so, under what circumstances? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that if things came out to a point of apology, uh, apology and him proving himself that he worthy uh, another uh, another chance. You know, once one give you an opportunity and you you show them how you appreciate the opportunity by fouling them, you know, should you get one? No, you know, the whole thing that, you know, a, a person needs to come to a person and say, look, hey, you know, on the frustration, uh, someone told me to do this and I was wrong for doing it. But, you know, you know, if you if you gonna have to come to me right for another fight, and the whole thing the whole thing to do the people really want to see about it. Who are you fighting next? I don't know. I'm somebody with the belt. Somebody with a belt. Yeah, somebody with a belt. Yeah. Is there anybody out there that even interests you a little that turns you on as a challenge? Well, you know, you, you got two people with belts. You know, I, the thing is, if I stay in the game, I'm a unified. So Mike Moore got one, and and Lenny Lewis, but Lenny Lewis fighting uh, Akawana pretty soon, so you don't know, uh, a chance of, you know, two fights, uh, three fights, or four fights. You know, you may get a chance to see a lot of me. 
Moore would be a good matchup for you because he's beating you, right? Well, you know, the whole thing is that well, he, he, got the, he got the decision. And uh, yeah, it would be a good fight. And Vander, thank you so much. We appreciate you doing it. And we hope that your ear feels better. Better already. All right. <laughs> Vander Holyfield, the champ, now back to the studio. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, something that may be forgotten in all of the bizarre circumstances, Holyfield retains the WBA heavyweight title. The rest, of course, to be continued. You know, earlier in this edition of Sports Center, we showed you highlights of uh, Tyson and Holyfield, the rematch, or as it may come to be known as, American Werewolf in Vegas. <laughs> it ended in a DQ of Tyson, who was seeking his 40th knockout. And that's plenty by today's standards. Did you know that young Striebling holds the heavyweight record for most knockouts in a career with 126 from 1921 to 1993, 1933? His real name was W.L., and he fought in every weight class from Bantam to heavyweight, finishing with 222 wins. That's going to be... CNN headline sports. The fallout from Saturday night's Holyfield Tyson fight continues after two vicious Tyson bites to the ears. Evander Holyfield is recovering, but the sports world is weighing questions surrounding Tyson's $30 million purse, his legal status, and the fate of boxing. Mike Tyson does not deserve the privilege of fighting for a, a, a title against somebody like Evander Holyfield. Knowing Evander, Evander might, but I would you know, I would try to tell him don't. It's official now. Boxing is no longer a sport. Now it's a parody of the life of Vincent Van Gogh. If Ander Holyfield keeps his crown, Mike Tyson loses his dentures. Now Nevada lawmakers are looking into stiffer penalties for ear biting. How about stiffer penalties for people convicted of being involved in boxing? It's not just that the game has lost any remaining credibility. Worse still, it's not even funny anymore. Sunday, reporters asked Holyfield for his thoughts. No, he didn't say, huh? What? Huh? It hurt so bad that when I went to the corner, I was frustrated. And, uh, and my corner people said, you know, just relax, man. Just, just relax. Pray. And, you know, and, and I was able to relax. And, and that's the only reason I went back out there. And I'm glad, I, you know, they probably would have disqualified me if I wouldn't have fought. But more, they would say, you know, the, the guy took the easy ride out. But, you know, you know, after I was able to get focused, you know, I, I went back out there. You know, but I went back out there to, you know, really try to get the fight over. And uh, I caught him with a good shot. Then he bit my other ear. I believe the, the actions of Mike Tyson were tortious actions. Um, whether Evander Holyfield wants to do something about that or not is something that we'll consider in, in due course. An old Monty Python sketch concludes with a boxing promoter admiringly asking his trainer, did you see the champ's right arm? The trainer says no, and the promoter says, well, wait till everybody leaves and then look around the hall afterwards. Thus, it proves it nearly happened Saturday night in Las Vegas as the crowd filed out after the disqualification. A hotel worker found an inch-long piece of Holyfield's ear and took it to his dressing room. Hey, thanks. And writers have had fun with this one from reality bites to irresponsible to our personal favorite, Paper Chew. Mike Tyson wants a formidable champion, trying now to avoid remaining a figure of virtual universal scorn. He has performed the impossible, though, discrediting boxing beyond all imagination while stealing attention from one of the sport's stand-up individuals, Evander Holyfield, the WBA champion. Tomorrow, the Nevada State Boxing Commission will likely take some action against Tyson, and within the hour, Tyson was in full spin mode, apologizing to the world and to the most important parts of that world, the Athletic Commission, the MGM Grand, and Showtime, which pay Tyson and the judge who oversees his continuing parole. I cannot tell why exactly I acted like I did, other than um, to say when the button occurred, uh, and I thought I might lose because of a severely of a cut above my eye, I just, I just snapped and reacted and did what many athletes have done and, have, and had paid the price for it. I apologize to the world, to my family, and to the Nevada State Athletic Commission that has always treated me fairly, to Judge Patricia Gifford, who I know I'm proud of the, of, uh, to the living up to the terms of my probation. I apologize to the MGM, to Showtime, to Don King, my promoter, to my team, to this wonderful city of Las Vegas that has hosted so many fabulous boxing events. I expect to pay the price like a man, and I accept the Nevada, the Nevada State Athletic Commission to hand down a severe penalty 
and I'm here today to say I will not fight it. I only ask that it's not a penalty for life. Avanda, I'm sorry. You're a champion, I respect that. And I only sat in that the fight didn't go on further that for that the boxing fans of the world might have seen the, for themselves who would come out on top. When you butted me in the first round, accidentally or not, um, I, I snapped in reaction and the rest is history. The State Athletic Commission is limited in the amount of money it can take from Mike Tyson. That would be 10% right now of his $30 million purse. It can also impose a suspension. Not that the commission is going to listen to the public, but the public in this voting today online on the ESPN Sports Zone overwhelmingly in favor of a lifetime ban for Mike Tyson. Over 60% of those voting choosing that option over a temporary suspension or merely the maximum fine. None of which, of course, may mean anything to the Athletic Commission, but fans are the pay-per-view TV audience, and right now they are turning off Mike Tyson. We call in Al Bernstein, live from Las Vegas. What about the future of Mike Tyson as an attraction? People are viewing him with scorn around America at this point. You know, it's interesting, Bob, looking at that and reading the uh, text of what Mike Tyson did, a couple of things jump out at me, and they may to other people as well. Number one, it looked like he was reviewing that material for the very first time when he read it. And I'm, I know that you know, not everybody's an, an anchor man like you, and they're not going to be reading perfectly, but I didn't sense from Mike Tyson that these were words he crafted. I suspect that other people may feel that way as well. He also kept using the word but again. I want to emphasize something here. The term for this is not a but. It's a clash of heads. When you say a but, it indicates that somebody was trying to do something to you. So I think he's still clinging to the idea that Vander Holyfield did bad things to him, which is ironic because Mike Tyson was one of the dirtiest fighters in history over his heavyweight reign. I had a chance tonight to talk to Mohammed Sadiq, who is uh, Tyson's spiritual advisor. Sadiq was with Tyson up to the fight and after the fight. And he said after the fight, Team Tyson, there was no one with a sense of remorse or apology. So was today an exercise in sincerity or expediency? Well, you know, the word spin doctor is an important one in our society now, and uh, the way today was orchestrated was interesting. Mike Tyson walks in alone, just Mike, no Don King, no Team Tyson, no anybody. I think uh, that was a pretty, pretty apparent move to make it look as if this was a remorseful man coming in. And, you know, he may be remorseful, but he also hasn't addressed the issue that most Americans and most boxing fans around the world have in their mind. Did you do this because you were actually trying to get out of the fight? Did you bite because you wanted to end the fight? You would have been warned by Mills Lane, again, if you do it one more time, I'll disqualify you. Did you think you were going to lose? Mike Tyson is 31 years of age today. What do you think the commission will do tomorrow? Do you think they'll suspend him? Well, they'll certainly suspend him for at least a year. The highest I think he would get is two years. They'll also take money away from him, probably 10% of his purse. Um, that's about all they can do. It could give him a lifetime ban. I very much doubt that they will actually do that. Um, and so the fate of Mike Tyson is in the hands of places like the MGM and other hotels, would they risk another fight with him? It's in the hands of pay-per-view fans, will they pay for it? Ironically, Evander Holyfield, I talked to his people today, I sense that Holyfield, even this early on in the game, is softening a little bit, and if they came to him with a $40 million offer, as bad as things were, who knows down the line, he might even uh, accept it. And he's joking so much these days, he is personally referring to himself as the real meal. The real meal. But, of course, if there's going to be a Tyson Holyfield 3, that depends on the length of a suspension right. if one is to be levied tomorrow, right? Right. And, of course, a big bearing on that is the fact that Evander Holyfield is 34 years of age. He has some other things in mind. He's very much looking at a Michael Moore fight. My guess is that no matter what happens with Mike Tyson, we've seen the last of the Tyson-Holyfield fights. Okay, Al. Al Bernstein joining us live from Las Vegas. Thanks, Al. Thought that from pre-fight to post-fight, the sport of boxing had nothing left that could shock you. Something like Saturday night's incident jumps up and bites you in the ear. What punishment fits that crime? Is there a precedent for us to draw on in a case like that? Well, maybe Dan Patrick can help jar your memory. I saw the fight. And until the, uh, what happened, it was, it was a good fight. And I was horrified by it. And I think the American people are. So how horrified are you? How bad is it to snack on the heavyweight champ of the world? Tearing off a piece of another human being with one's teeth during competition. Tyson did apologize. Evander, I'm sorry. I didn't sense from Mike Tyson that these were words he crafted. I suspect that other people may feel that way as well. I just, I just snapped. 
and reacted and did what many athletes have done and has and had paid the price for it scripted or not who cares the real issue is what's the price tyson must pay but there is precedence for biting in sports danny ainge and tree rollins got into it after rollins gave ainge a cheap shot and then rollins bit ainge in the ensuing melee i thought they said the hockey game was until tonight rollins the biter was only fined five thousand dollars and suspended two games for the ordeal ainge the bitee was fined one thousand dollars for his role in the fight kermit washington received the largest suspension in nba history 26 games for this near fatal blow to the houston rockets coach rudy tom Janovich during this fight in 1977 hit a ref actually headbutt a ref like dennis rodman in 1996 and you only get a six game suspension spit on an ump a la roberto alomar and it cost you five games five regular season games the following year cross check an opponent into the boards after he scores the game winner in a series clinching game 21 games see dale hunter and pierre turgeon 1993. note the trend go after another player big fine go after the ref smaller fine Maybe Tyson should have bitten Mills Lane. Do not do that again. If you do, you're gone. Juan Marichal in 1965 took a swing at Dodger catcher John Roseboro. Marichal was only suspended eight games. Look at me. You know, this is a hockey game. Look at my face. You know, I, I can't even talk. My nose, my whole side of my face. That was the result of this Claude Lemieux hit on Chris Draper in the Western Conference Finals last year. It cost Draper a visit to the plastic surgeon. It cost Lemieux two games in the Stanley Cup Finals. Woody Hayes cost himself his career after he slugged Clemson linebacker Charlie Bauman in the 1978 Gator Bowl, when Bauman's interception cost the Buckeyes the game. These incidents are nothing new. Slapping an opponent for coming into the winner's circle, coming off the bench to make a tackle in the Cotton Bowl, getting arrested for fighting the other mascot. The only question now is, should you get another crack at the real meal? Deal. Sadly, Tyson's sucker munch is another in a long line of unsportsmanlike outbursts. Where the penalty ranks with the others will be determined on Tuesday. Thank you, Dan. We mentioned punishment fitting the crime. 17,000 of you chimed in on our ESPN Sports Zone poll, which we realize isn't completely scientific, but more than half of you voted for a lifetime ban. How about the other end of the spectrum? Nearly 3% said no ban, no fine. To those people, I say, did you see the fight? And at the top of this week, our top stories on SportsCenter are headlined by Mike Tyson. In serious spin control mode tonight in Las Vegas, 43 hours after he bit a one-inch hunk out of the right ear of heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. Tyson tonight apologized to Evander Holyfield and said he expects a stiff penalty from the Nevada Commission. He said he would not contest the penalty. Late reaction in the boxing world. That's a nice statement. Now he's got to now, now he's got to walk the walk. He, he talked it. Now he's got to walk it. Now he's got to do it. Whether or not he's he's genuine, that's very difficult to determine. I think uh, he is going to get smacked with a very heavy fine, and certainly he's going to be suspended. The CNN headline: Sports. I'm Russell Bivens. On Saturday night, Mike Tyson shocked sports fans when he was disqualified for biting both ears of heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield during their rematch. Today, this being his 31st birthday. Mike Tyson held his first press conference since the incident. I cannot tell why exactly I acted like I did, other than um, to say when the button occurred, and I thought I might lose because of a severely of a cut above my eye, I just, I just snapped. I will continue to train not just my body, but my mind too, so that um, if possible, I can put this behind me, and so that I will, um, that it will never happen again. The Nevada State Athletic Commission will hold an emergency meeting tomorrow to decide what should happen to Mike Tyson. Now, on up close, it was the bite of the century. Why did Mike Tyson do what he did? Should he be allowed to fight again? Will boxing fans trust him enough if there is a next time? And who's next for champion of Vander Holyfield? Up close is up next. From the ESPN studios in Los Angeles, here's Chris Myers. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Hope you had a nice weekend. In a moment, we'll talk with boxer Bobby Chaz, who has fought Evander Holyfield. He worked the pay-per-view broadcast Saturday night 
in Las Vegas. We'll also be joined by Steve Albert, who called the fight or the bite with Mike Tyson. Both will give us an up-close view of that bizarre night in boxing history. First, Close in the headlines, Las Vegas slashed the White House, and President Clinton was among those who watched Saturday night's fight fiasco. He said he was, quote, horrified by what happened, but he hasn't given any thought to whether or not there should be any additional federal regulation in the sport of boxing. There were a number of uh, headlines in newspapers across the country after Saturday night's incident that captured the essence of the event, and we selected the eight that rate. And number one, the Herald Leader in Lexington called it Bite Night. The Times Union in Albany wrote Reality Bites. Fort Lauderdale's Sun Sentinel's headline read, Holyfield can't stay unbidden as heavyweight. At number four in the Houston Chronicle, earmarks of cowardice. Number five in the Herald Sun of Durham, North Carolina, from champ to chump. And number six, the New York Post headline read, for Tyson, tooth hurts. And number seven in the Tennessean, a lobe blow for boxing on the final of the grade eight headlines over the fight, the Philadelphia Daily News describing Holyfield Tyson as pay per chew. And uh, for more on the fight, by the way, those coming from our home office in Bristol, Connecticut, we welcome to the program. They called the fight for Showtime. Bobby Chez, boxer Steve Albert, announcer, you have been around or called each of uh, Mike's six fights since his release from prison. I thank both of you for being here on, on short notice. I'm sure it was a draining weekend in Las Vegas. I was over there myself still trying to recover. Bobby, let's start with you. What was your immediate reaction? You're calling the fight for Showtime on pay-per-view. Did you see the bite, and did you realize what was going on? You no, know, from the point of view where we're sitting, I couldn't actually see the bite i just saw evander his back was to me and him jump and, and step back and i had no clue what was going on and ferdy actually saw from his angle that he was bit and was this, steve did you notice the first bite or not until the second time that it was brought out i didn't notice it till the second time uh by virtue of the position that bobby and i were in directly behind holyfield we did not see the actual bite we obviously saw the the wild reaction by Holyfield after he was uh, bitten. Ferdy had the angle on it, so about a uh, half a second after it, it occurred, he blurted out, I think he's been bitten. And that's when all heck broke loose. But you know, it's funny, Chris, you try to envision every possible scenario going into a, a big fight such as this, a TKO, a KO, a decision, a come from behind victory. You try to picture what you might uh, see and say when it, when it happens. This didn't exactly enter into the uh, into the thought process. Yeah, I, I mean, the Associated Press had a quote from Mike Tyson afterwards saying, "This is over. My career's over. I know it." Bobby, how much does this hurt Mike Tyson's credibility? I mean, he was. It, it hurts his credibility. It hurts his reputation. On the way back uh, to the hotel, on the way out that night, on the way here to L.A., everywhere that I've run into Mike Tyson fans, you know, I was a big fan, and I was is the key word there. I was a big fan, and I've lost so much respect for him. I, you know, there's a tremendous amount of emotional and physical pressure on the fighter. The scrutiny for Mike and Evander had to be tenfold to the average champion. Maybe he just snapped. Maybe he just lost it. And we want to address that. If maybe he needs some psychiatric help uh, later in the program, but premeditated without the mouthpiece, because Mike's argument was that he was headbutted by Holyfield, and that's why he had to bite in retaliation. I think, at the, you know, right off the top of his head, the butt probably really ticked him off. He probably got upset with it and just reacted. But the second bite is reprehensible. It has to be. That has to be premeditation. The first bite, I could say, you know, he just, the rage, he saw red, he spit it out, he bit. I mean, oh, gee, I should have never, you know, done that. And who knows what was going through his mind. But I could see the reaction. If he had bit me, I'd probably kicked him just at a sheer, you lost your just at a sheer reaction, you know. And the people are going to see, this is going to be on the delayed broadcast on the 7th, 9 p.m., both coasts. He gets a chance. I mean, he, he's gnarling at that ear like he is intending to make and cause some pain. Yeah, Showtime will show uh, rebroadcast the event. Steve, what do you expect Tuesday? The commission will hold a special hearing to determine whether they should withhold the purse, which is 10% allowable by law in Nevada, and whether Mike will be suspended or not. What do you think will happen? Realistically, I think uh, there'll be uh, some kind of a suspension. Uh, whether it's six months, a year, I don't know. And uh, they can take 10% uh, of the purse, which would be $3 million. Uh, what I'd love to see happen is for them to take the entire purse and contribute it to charity and also uh, suspend them for a couple of years, if not ban them from boxing altogether. But that's wow. probably not going to happen. All right, so, but you would be in favor. Bobby, is two, is two had, years he, or a lifetime ban something that's... Here, that's here's my problem with it. I know Mike, and I've always liked Mike, and we've gotten along over the years. Here's my problem with it. The first bite, not excusable by any stretch of the imagination. At the same time, people react badly sometimes in certain pressure cookers, and certainly he was in one head-butted, you know, the, the reign of Mike Tyson was coming to an end as far as the myth and the aura. 
But the second bite is what has me upset. He's just been penalized two points. He's been all but disqualified, because if anything happens again, it's certain grounds for disqualification. He has to be banned for a minimum of a year. I think the second bite warrants two. What he did is just unjustifiable. I mean, the result of a headbutt by Evander Holyfield, it just does not warrant the kind of behavior that we saw. It is uh, unbelievable what he did. And, and not only that, but the guy should take a, a step back, see the big picture, and also realize how much work. I realize I appreciate the work that he does in preparation for a fight, uh, but how much work went into a, a production an extravaganza like this from behind the scenes people in production in broadcasting uh... the public relations people secretaries countless numbers of people who are involved in this process and here's a guy making thirty million dollars and again i realize how much he how he works towards this goal but i don't think he realizes how much goes into this and how he just screwed up the operation well and how an average guy pays anywhere from sixty to hundred and fifty or right. fifteen hundred dollars for for a ticket and it does not get their money's worth i don't think anybody has a problem if a guy tries hard and loses but when a guy quits and that's in essence to me bobby what he did well, he was what? disqualified but he quit there's, didn't, there's didn't kind he know of a, he was losing it's kind of a funny thing when well, years ago in the amateurs there was a kid who was getting beat and he kicked his opponent right in the groin need him right in the groin and disqualified him and afterwards he said, oh, you got beat. He said, I didn't lose. I was disqualified. Like, there's a difference. Okay. You're disqualified, you lose. But it's somehow, it's a, just say it's a cop-out if that, in fact, was what was going through his mind. Now, certainly I don't know what's going through his mind. And I just real quickly have to sing of Andrew Holyfield's praises because he's a better man than I am. I would not have reacted so well afterward. I would have kicked Mike myself. Yeah, and you have been actually bitten before in the ring. And Holyfield, really a true champion, the way he, he handled it. So I want to ask you if Mills Lane should have stopped it after the first biting, because he was aware of that. We have to take a quick time out. We're with Bobby Chez and Steve Albert. They were there. They called the fight for Showtime, the, the fight between Nevander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. We'll talk more about that. And we'll also address the issue, does Mike Tyson need some psychological help here? Don't go away. Today's headlines are brought to you by Radio Shack. You've got questions. We've got answers. He looked right at me, and I saw him, and he was going for it, and he kept going flying. He butted me again. He kept going down and coming up, and he charged into me. And no one warned him. No one gave him, took any points for him. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. Right. I got children to raise. Comments of uh, Mike Tyson after the incident on Saturday night in Las Vegas. Mike Tyson's birthday today, by the way. He is 31 years old. We're talking about the fight with Bobby Chez, boxer, and Steve Albert, the broadcast, both calling the uh, fight for Showtime on Saturday night. Uh, Mills Lane, after the biting took place the first time, should he have stopped the fight at that time? Well, understand the magnitude of where he was and what he was involved in. I don't believe he could have done it without getting lynched or have bottles thrown at him or whatnot, what have you. It would have caused tremendous con controversy. I think what he did was proper. He asked Flip Amansky, can he continue with this cut, with this bleeding and this lack of ear? And can he, and he asked the corner, is he okay to continue? And Evander, being the true warrior that he is, said, let's go. But mind you, any blatant foul, somebody, if somebody were to kick you, you could probably continue, but it's, it's grounds for dismissal, for disqualification. I think it was, without question, Chris, an act of desperation. Uh, Holyfield officially won the first two rounds. If you recall, Tyson was just starting to uh, come around a little bit in the third round. The crowd was starting to turn a little bit. It was almost like a Rocky movie against the, the Russian fighter. First the chance of Holyfield, then the, ch the chance of Tyson. And even he was starting to come around, and so you got to feel that uh, he thought that Holyfield was totally unsolvable in his mind, and he had to resort to these kinds of tactics. He, he was looking for a way out. Yeah, and let's talk about those tactics, because you heard his rationale, which is, it, this, it's, it's a strange rationale, the, the end bump here, his comment on that he has the family uh, to feed. I mean, does he... Well, if he can't feed him with the first $150 million, let, give it to me, I'll feed him. <laughs> but, but does he have a problem in, in terms of where he is of knowing uh, the difference between right and right and wrong. Understand the rationale of a fighter, though. For that brief time when you're inside that, that, that those square ropes and you have no one but yourself, your mindset is different. Your mindset is truly different. Yeah, but you know rules, Bob. You have to be aware of the rules, whether you're, yeah, you're, you're aware in the of the heat rules, of battle. But it's the heat of battle. I, I have jokingly said over the course of years that if I'm fighting a guy in a, in a world championship fight and it's a close, tough, hard fight and we're being brutalized back and forth, if I hit a guy and his eye falls out of his head, I would probably try and eat it before he got it back. And somebody would look at me, oh my God, he's nuts. It's, it's a mindset, I wouldn't do it. But it's the type of mindset you have to get because the minute you become compassionate and have passion, compassion in the ring and become a little more human, you're less of a fighter and 
But Holyfield Some, has that. And, and Holyfield separates the two fight. carefully, just like I believe I do, and many fighters do. Hey, Some fighters can't cr can't control that rage. I just think he, he's lost touch with reality. Do I think, think he's mentally disturbed. Do you think, do you think yeah. so? That you think some kind of psychiatric help would be beneficial? Well, I'm not a doctor, but uh, we work with a doctor. Right. He doesn't and even that, play one on TV. And right? I don't even play one on TV. But, but Ferdy Pacheco, he, right? He, he, right? He's a real doctor, and uh, that's what he said on the air. Uh, so uh, I, I believe that as well. I believe that uh, he, he uh, should be seeking help. You know, a little help. while back, we saw Oliver McCall crying and losing his mind. And I joked about uh, Tom Hanks in The League of Their Own. There's no crying in baseball. Well, there's certainly no crying in boxing. Well, lastly, there is definitely no biting in boxing. There's just no, I, there's no room for anything like this to I mean, it's not even in, in wrestling. Anyway. It's not even tough men. It's not even in ultimate rules. And we see it here in uh, the, uh, you know, in boxing. It's, it's ridiculous. The sweet science is just tainted. It, 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 yeah, an act of desperation. I think that's the best way to describe it. You have fought uh, Holyfield as recently as May of last year. Would you fight somebody like Tyson after, after seeing this kind of behavior? Sure. I'd fight him. You wouldn't be afraid of it's a guy It's all financially like motivated. Oh, well, no, it, it, I'd fight Mike Tyson for free just... For, just for the really? sheer, Put that in writing. Just <laughs> yeah. for the sheer thrill of being in with him, because I still believe he has great boxing ability. Can't like Pete Rose is not in the Hall of Fame. His accomplishments inside baseball were such that it warrants it. What he did outside baseball is irrelevant. Yeah, but Mike, Mike did here. Mike did here is, in the, Mike is, is in the ring. He's still a great fighter. I can't t I can't just say, oh, geez, he's not a better. He's not as good a human being, maybe as well. As I but he's not as good a fighter either, Bobby. If he can't at least fight like a man and win or lose like a man. What I was hoping for, and you'll see, if you saw the broadcast, they call Holyfield the real deal. Today we'll find out the real truth. If that's the real truth, I want no part. His one-dimensional attack was was exposed tremendously in the but first. But he started fight. to win the third round. He won. Yeah, but All he, three judges gave, and he started to be effective. But getting which back is why to the I point. can't understand. Why snapping then? Let me get your thoughts on Remember, Michael's at the prison, and you saw, each of you saw all of his fights since he comes out. He says he's a new man. He's married. He's found a new religion. There's a new direction in his life. He looks like the same, I'll, I'll start with you, Steve, the same old Tyson, maybe even worse. Uh, I, have to, I have to agree. Uh, from a mental standpoint, yeah, I think that's because he, he surrounds himself with questionable people. Uh, the John Horns and the Rory Holloways. I think if he, if he got into some uh, better company, he could turn and he could be a better person uh, and maybe even a better fighter. But there's no, no question that his skills have eroded after three years in prison and another year gone by after that, while Evander Holyfield has gotten better. You know, I've taken exception to some of the things printed about boxing when some individual, in this case Mike Tyson, does something. But remember something, boxing is not subsidized at any of the teaching levels, not at grammar school, high school, college, universities. So we have to go somewhere else to find the boxing. And usually where we go is to a gym where there are some seedy characters and uh, certainly some bad people, but then when we get to the Olympics, there are the people cheering us on. We turn pro in Vegas, there they are cheering us on, only to when we retire say, ah, he's just a dumb, punch-strong fighter. They will not give us, and in general, people can't afford to do with some of the things. I was supported by my family. Not everybody has that opportunity. Boxing needs to be subsidized at the early school levels where people can be taught sportsmanship, taught and educated. All right, before the break, though, let me ask you, Tyson, is he worse or better off uh, mentally and physically since before prison? Right now, uh, it, it appears. Well, appearances appears that he's a little worse off. I think both time away, and I think uh, he still resents a lot of things that happened to him, claiming that he was unrightfully put there too. So maybe it's all built up, and this is how it came out. All right, we'll take a break. We'll see. Uh, I get your thoughts on if the fans will be back, if Mike Tyson uh, fights again, or when he fights again, if he gets another shot at Evander Holyfield, and also later, what's next for Evander? Where does Michael Moore stand at all this? He was ready to fight Tyson. We'll be back in a moment. Music Express, voted number one by the National Limousine Association, has offices in Los Angeles and on the East Coast. Music Express can handle your corporate needs anywhere in the U.S. and worldwide. And guests of Up Close stay at the Beverly Prescott, L.A.'s premier boutique hotel. Call your travel agent to make reservations at the Beverly Prescott, a Kimpton hotel. It's more on Mike, Bobby Chess, and Steve Albert, who are ringside for the fiasco Saturday night. Continue the discussion. Don't go away. You get focus. You know, I... I went back out there, you know, but I went back out there to, you know, really try to get the fight over, and um, I caught him with a good shot. Then he bit my other ear. We're up close here in Los Angeles talking with Bobby Chez and Steve Albert. They were there for Showtime to call the fight as Evander Holyfield withstood the biting of Mike Tyson. By the way, should uh, Evander give Mike a rematch? Should Ev he Evander, he won't. Evander should do whatever Evander wants to do. Evander was a class act the whole time. Evander did everything correctly. He came in magnificent shape. He was fighting and doing what he was supposed to do. He should do whatever he wants, because whatever he wants to do is right, because it is. Mike isn't worthy of being in the same ring 
with uh, with Evander Holyfield. But isn't it true? We talked about uh, the suspension with, with Tyson, or maybe banishment. That that the, does boxing need people will pay to see Mike Tyson before they'll pay to see anybody else in the sport. So doesn't boxing need Mike, Mike Tyson? Tyson? Prior to this, could have gone shopping on a pay per view network. Just said, I'm going to spend a million dollars in cash at a mall in L.A. or Vegas, and they could have sold it and it made money with it. He was that. You know, people are you know, obsessed with a lot of different things. They have morbid obsessions with a lot of things throughout society, but. I can't see even his own fans who I've come across in the, in the course of the past 48 hours that want to support him. They don't want to see it. That's yes. how perverted this thing has, well, uh, has become. Uh, uh, Steve, this is one of the most watched fights, whether in attendance or pay-per-view, and maybe some, even some new fans in the sport of boxing. D do you think that, that there's, a, there's a mark on this for, for a long time that people will, will blame the sport because of what Mike Tyson well, did? Uh, that's, that's not fair to do. You've got to just blame Mike Tyson. It's, uh, but, it's if, a, but if boxing doesn't take a hard line, then you then you start uh, coming down on on the sport of boxing. My my hope is that it does take a hard line, and they could uh, then uh, you know really get into it and give the fans uh, at least something back after what uh, what's happened because this is totally uh, absurd. Because after remember the Sphinx fight, people said, "Oh, I, I'll never pay this kind of money." When Tyson fight ended so quickly, but yet Tyson is is still the draw. But you couldn't hold that against Mike Tyson. Bruce Seldon should be indicted for fraud because he quit. Now, I'll, sh I'll show you how bad it was. When Seldon went down, he got up, they administered the eight count. After the referee counted eight was going to let him go, he started wobbling to make sure the fight was over because if you're still wobbling at eight, no referee in his right mind is going to send you out there to get killed. But he started wobbling after eight because he wanted the fight to be over. If somebody quits, that's their fault. If somebody stands up to Mike and fights him hard and gets knocked out, my and Michael Spinks tried. He got hit with a clean shot and he went knocked I'm not going to condone what Bruce Seldon did because no. that, that was terrible, too. That's quitting, but, but, but that's uh, not Mike's fault. Apples and oranges because uh, what Mike Tyson did uh, was... Uh, is his uh, fault, though, Steve. Yeah, it's clearly Mike's disgraceful. fault. Disgraceful. But disgraceful. people who were turned off by those other things wasn't Mike's fault. He came to fight and they wouldn't fight him back. They quit. What Mike did here is clearly, clearly 100% his fault. All right, we're with uh, Bobby Chow, Steve Albert. We'll be back to wrap things up. We'll see who Evander Holyfield fights next, and also uh, Mike Tyson, if he'll get a chance to fight again, whether fans want him to or not. We'll be back in a moment. Up Close is brought to you by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. I think, it's, I think he should be suspended. I think that he should be taken for some kind of evaluation. I think he should be fined a huge amount of money. We're up close in Los Angeles on Tuesday, an emergency hearing by the Nevada State Athletic Commission on the future of uh, Mike Tyson. We're with Bobby Chez and Steve Albert. They were there, called the fight for Showtime. What do you think will happen? What do you think they'll do on Tuesday? My best guess is with all the pressure surrounding the State Athletic Commission in Nevada right now, the money generated by Mike Tyson, the heavyweight events in Nevada, and then and the need for the boxing to stay well there, I think he's going to get a token punishment. I don't think Token is what? Six months suspension. And what should he get? I think he should get two years. What's Unfortunately, his last fight was seven months ago, so six months suspension. What's six months? No I mean, big, you're, not, you're not going to be fighting anyway. He's not so, fighting. He's not, so his last so fight was seven months ago. That, I'm, my best guess is they max it out of the year, but I think a minimum of two would be a, 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 an apropos thing. So you think they're going to wimp out? And uh, what about the purse? Can, will they withhold the 10 percent? You know, it's funny. They, they fined me years ago for using nose spray uh, because it was an amphetamine-like substance. Well, you were using it on your hair. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> they, I'm kidding. Seriously. They fined me 20% of my purse, so I'm going to go back and talk to them. I got some back money due me. Times, uh, <laughs> times have certainly changed. So now this affects the contract that Tyson had with Michael Moore. They had to fight before November. John Davimos, the, uh, the fine manager of Michael Moore, says, now I, I don't know what to expect if Tyson is suspended. Does Michael Moore deserve a shot now at Holyfield? Well, I tell you, uh, as well, that would be nice for Holyfield to get some revenge. Uh, for what happened a few years ago. You're but, automatically uh, assuming Evander wins. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Huh? Uh, well, after, Isn't that good? after seeing the last few Michael Moore fights, particularly with Vaughn Bean last March, uh, I think it's a no contest. It's a no brainer as far as I, I feel. I like happen to agree. Yeah. I mean, even his own uh, trainer, Teddy Atlas, quit on him uh, after the last fight. Uh, it was a very lackluster, disappointing effort. Is this, the, is this the last of the heyday for boxing because we were building this Holyfield Tyson as, as the series that was going to, to save it, boxing? It was a series and may be the best of what we've already had, but every time you turn around, there's another fighter looking over your shoulder looking to keep up on you, another set of Olympics or World Games. There will be more world champions, but to these types of personalities come along very few times in a lifetime. And right now, the aura of Tyson, 
unfortunately or fortunately still exists because the I think the the division is is quite weak uh, it's meager beyond Holyfield and Tyson uh, Lennox Lewis and, and Henry Akinwandi don't uh, send a shiver in too many people's spines there they're gonna be fighting next week Michael Moore the same Franz both uh, uh, George Foreman I think all of that contributes to I this, have to come uh, out of really. retirement Steve that's all yeah right. don't retire just yet but you think we only have a minute left you think people will still pay they want to see Tyson even if they want to see him lose or they want to see there's the, the mystery the morbid, the morbid curiosity some people will turn on just to see if he'll bite again really? just to see if he'll bite again if you put Mike on in a knife fight they'd watch that that's the, the thing. I don't think it's curiosity. hurt the interest of the sport. I don't think yeah. it's hurt the interest. It's not Do you think Holyfield considers retirement after all this? What else does he have to prove? He doesn't have anything else to prove. He clearly doesn't. Not with Tyson, it, that's for he sure. He clearly doesn't have anything to prove to anyone, I, don't, I believe. He's a true warrior, and he's always fought over and above even what he had, and that was great ability. But he did say at one point, I heard, that he'd like to clean up the division. We'll see. All right, and he certainly will. I would start with Tyson, which he's done that. Thank you both for Thanks. coming by. Steve Albert, Bobby Chess, nice job on the fight. Hopefully you'll get a chance again to call a, a real fight when Mike Tyson doesn't misbehave. We appreciate you being on the program with us. Join us on Tuesday. We'll talk hoops with P.J. Carlos, our new head coach of the Warriors. Later in the week, Jerry Jones, owner of the Cowboys. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good week. We'll see you next time from Los Angeles. Take care. waiting to see the consequences of Mike Tyson's actions in the ring. It is a conversation piece wherever you turn and the jokes go with it. Indulge me. Of course, the fight was on paper chew. Evander is now the real meal, Holyfield, and heaven forbid the Tyson fight, Mr. Spock from Star Trek. You don't know whether to laugh or cry after what happened on Saturday. No tears from Tyson Monday. Just apologies for his reprehensible act. Nick Charles has the story from Las Vegas. We can only speculate that Mike Tyson spent two torturous days and nights contemplating his actions in the ring last Saturday night and his future in boxing. Monday, Tyson resurfaced, though, and called a news conference in which he apologized for biting Evander Holofield, but tried to justify it. I cannot tell why exactly I acted like I did, other than um, to say when the button occurred, uh, and I thought I might lose because of a severely of a cut above my eye, I just, I just snapped. For an athlete in the heat of battle to suddenly lose it, it's not new, but it's not right. And for me, it doesn't change anything. I was wrong. Tyson was a picture of repentance, apologizing for his conduct in and out of the ring and the verbally abusive behavior of those around him. He said he was sorry to, among others, the public, which witnessed his rage here at the MGM Grand and the record pay-per-view crowd that paid millions. Most notable, though, was that Tyson followed up Monday with the only thing Evander Holofield had asked of him. I have also told everyone associated with me that I will not stand for any more of the nasty, insulting comments made to Mr. Evander Holofield and his boxing team. Evander, I am sorry. You're a champion, I respect that. And I only sat in that the fight didn't go on further that for that the boxing fans of the world might have seen that for themselves who would come out on top. I accept this apology, but you, you, you know, when you look at uh, as a person sincere, only time tells that as well. But I don't think, regardless to whether a person apologizes or not, the, the commission still have to do their job. Tyson was a man alone out there for the first time. His entourage backstage. And while it was the fighter who was ultimately responsible for what he did, those around him were still throwing kerosene on the fire, tossing the blame back at the champion. The Holyfield kind of took the fight to the street. So when you street fight, you know, everything goes. And that's what he did. Mike was trying to fight and keep everything clean. But this guy, this guy practiced that. You know, those are not accidental butts. That's practice. They, they practice those butts. If you slow the tape down, you can see that Tyson head was up and he was talking to the uh, complaining, saying that I was headbutting and I hadn't headbutted him, and he got hit with a left hook, which caused the cut. Tyson has one more fight on his contract with the MGM, which was tight-lipped on its future association with the fighter. Before Tyson left the spotlight Monday, though, he essentially threw himself on the mercy of boxing, begged for another chance, and vowed he's ready to accept any punishment the Nevada State Athletic Commission may pursue here Tuesday. Tyson then disclosed that he is desperate to change his ways and learn from his, quote, horrible mistake. I had also reached out since Saturday to the medical profession for help to tell me why I did what I did, and I will have that help as well. And now I will continue to train 
not just my body, but my mind too, so that um, if possible, I can put this behind me and so that I will, um, that it will never happen again. Tyson's damage control included an apology to Patricia Gifford, the presiding judge in his rape trial in Indiana. CNNSI, meanwhile, was told by Tyson's chief probation officer there that the court, quote, is not happy with the way he handled his anger and frustration, and that if criminal charges are filed, Mike Tyson could have his probation revoked. Nick Charles, CNNSI. Well, Holyfield also said that Tyson tried to call him at his home, but he was out. However, he appreciated the personal gesture. Also on Monday, a Dallas attorney filed a federal lawsuit against Tyson, Don King, and cable companies that carried the fight. Steven Guggenheim filed a $200 million nationwide suit on behalf of boxing fans who paid the $50 or $60 to see the fight. The aim is to get that money refunded. The suit alleges Tyson and King breached a contract and defrauded viewers by failing to comply to produce a boxing match in compliance with the rules. On Tuesday, don't forget to tune to CNNSI at 1 p.m. Eastern for live coverage of the Nevada State Athletic Commission's decision on Mike Tyson's purse and other possible sanctions. Larry? Get him the he this is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. There's a difference between an unintentional butt and a bite. He spit out of my feet and he bit me in the air. I got to retaliate. He's just doing illegal tactics. He got a little nicks on him there and he quit. Everybody know how to get out of the fight. He didn't want to fight. I'm ready to fight him right now. All you have to do is foul. Look at me. You had a chance to fight. Look at me, man. Boxing's most most anticipated rematch became its most bizarre moment. You can see it. You can see it. Holyfield, Tyson 2, Monday, July 7th on Showtime. Birthday, Mike Tyson. Happy was omitted from the phrase. Tyson had planned to celebrate his 31st birthday Monday in a New York City nightclub. Instead, it figured to have been a sleepless night with Iron Mike's boxing future likely to be decided Tuesday by Nevada boxing authorities. The public outcry following Evander Holyfield being twice bitten by Tyson reached President Clinton, who said he was horrified. Tyson said he was sorry to the commander-in-chief and everyone else for that matter. He had every ear out there when he literally apologized to the world. I cannot tell why exactly I acted like I did other than um, to say when the button occurred I, and I thought I might lose because of a severely of a cut above my eye, I just, I just snapped and reacted and did what many athletes have done and has and had paid the price for it. I apologize to the world, to my family, and to the Nevada State Athletic Commission that has always treated me fairly, to Judge Patricia Gifford, who I know I'm proud of the, of, uh, to the living up to the terms of my probation. I apologize to the MGM, to Showtime, to Don King, my promoter, to my team, to this wonderful city of Las Vegas that has hosted so many fabulous boxing events. I expect to pay the price like a man, and I accept the Nevada, the Nevada State Athletic Commission to hand down a severe penalty, and I am here today to say I will not fight it. I only ask that it's not a penalty for life. Evander, I am sorry. You're a champion, I respect that. And I only said that the fight didn't go on further that for that the boxing fans of the world might have seen the, for themselves who would come out on top. When you butted me in the first round, accidentally or not, um, I, I snapped in reaction and the rest is history. Kind of refreshing, no son of Don King. Tyson has said that since the events of Saturday night, he has already gotten some psychological help. He can expect a visit shortly from his probation officer, who said he wants to speak with Tyson about his state of mind at the time the biting began and his current state of mind. Following Mike's apology, Evander Holyfield spoke his mind. I accept this apology, but you, you, you know, when you look at uh, as a person sincere, only time tells that as well. But I don't think, regardless to whether a person apologizes or not, the, the commission still have to do their job. A spokesperson for Las Vegas police tells ESPN they will not file charges against Tyson. However, any officer who was assaulted by him has the option of filing charges on their own. So far, that has not happened. You heard Tyson just before say that he expects to pay the price. What about the $30 million he has coming his way? That check remains in a safe pending a hearing. The most he could be fined, 
three million dollars. Stewart. There, and in the immortal words of Jack Buck following the Kirk Gibson World Series home run, I can't believe what I just saw. Mike Tyson's bite, which left the sport, the business, and the fans of boxing with a wretched taste in their collective mouths, the subject today of a preliminary hearing of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Until the next hearing early next week, the commission ruled that Tyson's pay is frozen, he is suspended, pending next week's disciplinary hearing. I further move that the check number 061809 from Don King Production Incorporated made payable to Mike Tyson in the amount of $29,824,600 currently held by this commission be canceled or withdrawn and that Don King Production Incorporated issue another check made payable to the Nevada Athletic Commission for $29,824,000. Isn't it $29 million? $29 million, sorry. $29,824,600 to be held by this commission and that these monies be placed in the interest-bearing account pending the disposition of the complaint for disciplinary action against Mike Tyson. I further move that pursuant to Nevada revised statute 467156 that Mike Tyson be suspended pending the disposition of the complaint for disciplinary action against him. Meanwhile, back in Indiana, where Tyson remains on probation for his rape conviction, his chief probation officer said he expects to be in more frequent contact with Tyson in the immediate future and said, quote, Mike still has some learning to do about how to control his anger. We sampled some other reaction today. What we would like to see is some kind of a message sent that is sufficient to indicate to all boxers and to the public that this is a sport in which behavior like this simply will not be tolerated. I believe there's, uh, th there's going to be pressure on all sides. Uh, some people uh, would probably want less, some people want more. I just don't know. Uh, the commission has to be fair but firm. What did you make of Mike Tyson's public apology to you yesterday and the apology that he made to just about everybody else? I truly believe that was the first step of getting better. Once a person can admit that they was wrong, then the chance of them getting better is a lot greater than them not uh, making an apology. I, I truly believe that time itself would tell did he really mean that or not. So you're not quite believing yet, are you? Well, you don't think we shouldn't believe feelings and words. We should believe action. Action, action is the proven point of anything. Have you heard from Mike Tyson as yet? Well, Mike Tyson called me twice, and I, I wasn't here to uh, to receive his call. Uh, but uh, uh, but you know, I guess it did make me feel better that he he attempted to 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 call. When you eventually sit and chat with him by telephone or by whatever means. What words do you want to hear that you'll begin to believe that his apology is indeed legitimate? Well, yeah, it's, it's not about words, it's about action. I, you know, I've been deceived a lot of time in my life by words, so I, I really don't go on what people say. It's, you know, it's, it's their action. Did you headbutt Mike Tyson in the fight on uh, Saturday night, uh, which apparently, as he said, made him snap? No, I, I watched the tape. Uh, numerous of time and I haven't seen one hit but that I had but him I hit him with a left hook and at the time that uh, that cut his eye and you know I you know I, everybody can watch their own tape and see it for themselves I, it, it wasn't a head but why do you think this story now has taken on a life of its own everybody's talking about it it's going to be on nightline tonight the president talked about it yesterday it's all anybody is talking about it, even those who don't give a hoot about the fight business why do you think this story is, has uh, reached the depth that it has well i, I think it, I, boxing boxing is a sport that just about anything can happen but biting and, and that and that type of situation, I I think was the was a devastating blow, and and one way of one way or another, I think it's going to change boxing forever and make it better. Under what circumstances, if any, would you grant Mike Tyson another rematch? Well, you know, I'm the point of him getting better, I, and time will tell that he, whatever time they they give him to be off, and him being able to climb back to the top of the rank by, by beating guys in an honest fight. So you're not ruling it out, but you want to hear some kind of an apology that you believe is believable and the fact that he is able to get his career back in order. Those are the circumstances? Well, you know, he already made the apology. It's a point of action. Now, actions speak louder than words. Well, we shall see over the coming months and perhaps years. Evander, thank you. Well, thank you.
And coming up a little bit later here on this one-hour edition of Sports Center, Shelly Smith in Las Vegas with a detailed report on the hearing in Las Vegas of the Nevada State Athletic Commission earlier today. Bill? Andrew Holyfield refuses to rule out the possibility of an eventual rematch with Mike Tyson down the road way down the road. The length of that road is going to be determined next by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. A suspension is a virtual certainty. The only question is how long. This morning in Las Vegas, a preliminary hearing of the most influential commission in boxing. Shelley Smith was there. The Nevada Attorney General's office Tuesday said it would seek indefinite revocation of Mike Tyson's boxing license and a $2.9 million fine, 10% of his take from Saturday night's fight, where he twice bit Evander Holyfield. If it is a, a revocation, Mike Tyson has the liberty to reapply. But if he is found guilty of a foul or unsportsmanlike contact pursuant to 467.110, parent 1, parent C, the commission has the absolute discretion to deny any request to be relicensed. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Tyson did not appear at the emergency meeting of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, which reviewed a tape of the fight and scheduled a formal hearing for mid-next week to decide Tyson's future. His attorney confirmed that Tyson will waive his right to a 30-day waiting period and accept his punishment, even if it means a severe suspension. It's our intention at this time to appeal anything. Our intention at this time is to abide by whatever the commission deems is just and fair. And if that's what they deem is fair, then I guess we'll have to live with it. The commission must decide whether Tyson is guilty of violating two boxing statutes, unsportsmanlike conduct and discrediting the sport. They'll also decide the length of any suspension. The only thing we ask is that reason be exercised and that people not get carried away by emotions. Okay? You need to look at the situation, you need to look at what occurred, you need to deal with the facts as they are, not get carried away by the emotion and the, and the hype. While Tyson awaits his fate, the commission is holding on to his money. A check from Don King for $29,824,600, which it has placed in an interest-bearing account. And if Tyson doesn't have enough to worry about, he is also being sued by a disgruntled Los Angeles fight fan on behalf of the estimated 2 million pay-per-view customers. Tyson's attorney says he'll deal with that when this is over. In Las Vegas, I'm Shelley Smith, ESPN. On Tuesday, Evander Holyfield, the undisputed heavyweight champ. Now he speaks out about Mike Tyson's devastating blow to boxing. Dateline tonight on NBC. Coming up on CNN SI, we have the latest on the fallout from the ultimate sucker munch, including an irrational plea to Tyson. Come on, wine, relax, unwind, and try to be civilized. And I would like to have my money back from what I bet on him. Can I leave this? Saturday night, Mike Tyson turned barbaric. On Monday, he turned 31, apologized, and promised to turn over a new leaf. But the only turning over Tyson is expected to do is of a $29 million check already issued him by promoter Don King. The Nevada State Athletic Commission was the group that made that request, the same group that suspended Tyson today, temporarily, until a formal hearing is held, as early as next Tuesday. Senior correspondent Nick Charles has been covering this story since Saturday and now has the latest from Las Vegas. I apologize to the world, to my family, and to the Nevada State Athletic Commission that has always treated me fairly. After Mike Tyson asked the world to forgive him, his boxing fate is now headed for the scorecards. The five-member Nevada State Athletic Commission voted unanimously to pursue disciplinary action against Tyson for his conduct in the ring last Saturday night and to convene Tuesday or Wednesday of next week and hear the case. Tyson was not present at Tuesday's hearing, but his attorney reacted heatedly to suggestions the fighter should be severely punished. I don't think it's fair to say he wasn't punished when he was disqualified and he wasn't given an opportunity to complete the fight. To me, that was a pretty severe punishment. I don't see that. I mean, uh, we were fair commissioners. And when we go through all this here today, and we thought that was true, I don't think so. No, I think we got to go the process. But we want to get this behind us and move forward. I think Tuesday, we allow all the hearing, all the testimony coming before us. And I think that time we make the correct decision. The commission members reviewed a tape of the fight and voted to file a complaint against Tyson, who, according to his attorney, would be informed of the panel's decision and then waive his 30-day notice period so proceedings can begin next week, something all sides are anxious for. I'd prefer that everybody is here just to tell us what happened and what they feel. Mike Tyson is the person that has been called for a disciplinary hearing, so he's the one that's going to be the most important to talk to.
But looming in Indiana is the serious status of Tyson's probation and whether his behavior here will impact court officials there. I hope that the Indiana authorities will recognize the fact that Nevada has an administrative body that's dealing with what occurred in the ring and accept their findings and accept the fact that, uh, that there's going to be punishment imposed and realize that that is something separate and distinct from something they should get involved in. Tyson's trainer, Richie Giacchetti, was a curious spectator. He watched the fight again, heard the ruling, and then vanished from the building without a word of reaction Excuse and with a trail of reporters in pursuit. Tyson is not obligated to appear next week, but there's little doubt he'll be here. In the meantime, the commission ordered him to do one thing, return the check Don King gave him for $29,824,600 so they could freeze the fighter's pay while they determine his boxing future. Nick Charles, CNNSI. Well, Steve, Bob Lorenz got to go out to Evander's Holyfield's place today. He didn't get to go into the 54,000 square foot mansion, but he got to hang out in the gym for just a little bit. Yeah, Lorenz goes one-on-one -on -one with the bitee later in the show. But Bob did clean his pool. That was part of the interview deal. Yeah. Welcome back and going one-on-one -on -one with Evander Holyfield is no picnic. Mike Tyson will tell you that, but our Bob Lorenz today didn't lace him up, instead opting for the more civil approach, a one-on-one -on -one interview with the reigning champ. This is something you, with collected thoughts, uh, I'm venturing to guess, would never do. Mike Tyson did it, though. What does that tell you about him? Well, yeah, I'm, well we have, we, we mature. We grow into a maturity. And, you know, as a kid, you think like a kid when you're an adult. You have to leave a lot of things alone, meaning that the thought may come to mind, but that don't mean that you have to collect it and do it. And, and it's just proven a point when pressure hit him. Uh, the point to choose to do it, he, he did it. Yesterday, Mike Tyson apologized, made a very public apology. Uh, a lot of people thought it was very sincere, but some people, too, question the sincerity of it. You accepted the apology, but do you question its sincerity? Do you think maybe he was trying to sway pump public sympathy his way? He made a big step, and that big step to admit that I was wrong. And I'm sure any time that someone can admit that they're wrong, there's a chance there that they will change. What would you say, if it wasn't me sitting here one-on-one, -on -one, if it was Mike Tyson, what would you say to him about what happened? Well, you know, the whole thing is that, you know, I, I realized that it was wrong. And I realized that it's pressure to allow people to make decisions that they would eventually regret. And, and But the point is, is that, uh, you know, boxing is a sport. And something that both people train and they put all their time in to become our winners. But one thing that out of the game of boxing, you like to know that I did all that I could do and didn't have to cheat. And when you do a situation like that, you know, you can hurt a person for the rest of their life. You don't ever want to have to regret that you mangled somebody for the rest of their life and they got to live with it. Because you can't put a, a price value on scars and, and missing the ears and things like that. This is something that you just don't want on your mind. A lot of people have said that Mike Tyson one-on-one -on -one is a very nice, quiet, humble person, but maybe it's the people around him that aren't the positive influence. Would you agree with that, that maybe he needs a change in the people around him? Well, you know, Mike is a grown man. Mike has to make a decision. He has to be accountable for his action and the people around him. Um, with me, I'm a grown man, and who I hang around, and I have to be careful because how they act, it reflects on me too. And, and once Mike accepts that responsibility, then he may you may feel that it's better for him not to be around certain people because when you when you are the light people look at you and everything around you comes a part of you whether you like it or not well let's fast forward now Evander a lot of people are wondering if you will ever give Mike Tyson a rematch the people from your camp Don Turner your trainer Jim Thomas your manager have said there's no way this guy deserves a rematch how does Evander Holyfield feel well the whole thing is that it's not about what a person deserves because you know we as people who can say what we deserve, what we have? Would I, you flat out like a rematch? Would, yeah. Is it something you're considering? Not, not right away. Right now, it's just your time itself would prohibit to happen because, you know, he hadn't proven, he hadn't proven that I can control my my attitude and all that. Time itself would tell. Mm -hmm. And you, there's no reason for me to say, well, he'll never get better or he will. But time itself, if as time permits, and two years down the road. And Mike have proven by being out there fighting in, in, a, in, in a good measure, why not? But I would never say never. 
Oh, the door is open for some big cash there. As of late this afternoon, the Nevada State Athletic Commission had not received a signed waiver for Mike Tyson, which would permit a disciplinary hearing to take place as early as next week. The commission, in fact, had expected the papers yesterday, so now the earliest that the hearing into the Tyson punishment can take place is next Wednesday. And as of tonight, still no guarantee of that. Forget for a moment the damage done to Mike Tyson's professional reputation following Saturday's spectacle in Las Vegas. Iron Mike's biggest loss might be to his wallet. The Nevada Athletic Commission has temporarily suspended his $30 million purse because of his antics. Still at stake, the balance of Tyson's contracts with the MGM Grand and Showtime, deals totaling in the neighborhood of $47 million. Saturday night cannibalism. Mike Tyson has apologized to everyone under the sun, but he did it at a press conference. On Wednesday, the chairman of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the body that holds Tyson's boxing future in its hands, said he wants to hear Tyson's apology in person. Dr. Elias Ghanem said Wednesday that he hopes Tyson personally appears at the commission hearing next week. I don't want to press anything and tell him he has to show up, but we are really talking about Mike Tyson here, he said. Stuart? A boxing. The three-time heavyweight champion, the real meal, Evander Holyfield, celebrated his bizarre victory on Saturday night. He had a rally today in his native Atlanta, a rally that highlighted Holyfield's strong Christian faith. Holyfield said he's ready to fight again in November, and he's ready to forgive Mike Tyson for his violent display in the ring. It's not an eye for eye or a tooth for a tooth. We should always learn to forgive. But even as you forgive the person who who choose to let their attitude, their attitude cause him to lose, that will cost him just pretty much everything in their life. The person who chooses, as he said. As for the king of the megabytes, and we don't mean Bill Gates, Mike Tyson's statue was moved yesterday. His statue at the Hollywood Wax Museum. Curators moved Tyson from the sports section of the museum and positioned him next to Hannibal Lecter. Meanwhile, we're not making this up, a New Hampshire man is suing the state police for not controlling a police dog three years ago. It's a Rottweiler that allegedly bit the man who required medical assistance. The police dog is named Tyson.